Welcome back. In this video, we're going to see how to set up our MyStatLab account and also see some of the basic features of how the um, software works. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to your favorite web browser. I like uh, either Edge or Chrome. Uh, seems to work okay. Uh, MyStatLab.com. M-Y-S-A. Learn to spell. M-Y-S-T-A-T-L-A-B.com. MyStatLab.com. Okay. All right. So then you should get a screen that looks something like this. Um, if you are doing this for the first time, uh, you'll want to push uh, register now as student. If you already have a Pearson account, um, you'll still need to register, but you won't need to create uh, the account. You will just need to add into my course. Um, most people, though, uh, will just push register now. In, in the future, you won't need to do that. You will go straight to sign in, which I'll show you later. So we're going to go register now as student. And then uh, there's allegedly three things that you need to do in order to create the account. An email address, which you have. Uh, the course ID, which you have, or I'll give you again. And then uh, a credit card uh, access code or PayPal. So more on that in a little bit. We're going to push OK, register now at the bottom. And then this is the part where you need the course ID. And that was Kleinfelter, KL. E I N is in Nancy, F is in Frank, E L T is in Tom, E R, and then 08389. And then push continue to register. Okay. That's kind of... Okay. All right. They changed this uh, since the last time I did this. They've changed it. For one thing, you'll notice that I keep calling it my math lab. They've changed it. It's my stat lab now. We're going to push create an account if we've never done this before. Uh, put an email address uh, that you actually use, uh, confirm your email address, pick out a username, and then uh, password. So let me go through the details here. All right, so let me change this slightly because it's going to tell me I already have an account if I do that. So let me put a two on there. And let's do that again. You want to actually use uh, an email address that you check. You can use the one associated with the college or any other one uh, that you actually check. You can pick out a username as your of your own, or you can keep a check mark uh, box checked to just use the uh, email address uh, that they give you. Okay. Um, password: eight or more characters, at least one uppercase and one number. Uh, first name: please put your first name in the first name spot and your last name in the last name spot. It'll make it easier for me to find you on the roster. Um, it will help me if you use whatever name COD has on self-service. If you have some sort of preferred name that you would rather use, then that's okay. Um, um, but if you could send me a message letting me know, especially if you have a pretty common last name, uh, just so that I can uh, make sure to connect the right person on the roster with uh, the right person in my stat lab. Okay, select your role. Uh, your student, and then study level, um, undergraduate, uh, date of birth, format, month, year, dash, let's say 2000 for you. Okay, agree to the terms of use, and then create an account. So I'm not going to do this because I don't want to create the phony account and have it sit on my roster, but that's how um, this is going to go. Okay, so... Um, now let me go ahead and do it. It didn't come to the part of the payment. Okay, so it's created the account. Um, the, um, let me click on get started. They've changed this, like I said, since the last time. Okay, there we go. I was waiting for this screen to show up. All right, so this is the part where uh, they want you to pay. Uh, if you already have an access code, so like you've bought the textbook and it came with like a uh, cardboard with one of those scratch off, um, things showing the code, you have that. Um, you can pay for it. Um, 24 months is about $130. Um, 18 weeks is about $95. Here's, here you got to make a decision, which you can delay the decision uh, to. Um, let's think about this for a second. Um, $130 versus 95. If you feel like you're pretty confident, 
um, given that we haven't started the class. If you feel pretty confident that you're going to be able to finish this class on the first try, I would go with the $95 one. That's going to be $35 cheaper than the other one. Uh, the other one, 24 months, that's two solid years. So you may want to decide, okay, well, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to get this done the first time. And so for $35 more, I get two years worth of access versus basically a semester. That's a decision only you can make. And unfortunately, you can, I can't help you with that part. Um, one thing that can help though is, oh, notice here on Math 14, Spring 2024. Yes, I got the course ID correct. That's good. One thing that can help with the decision here is if you don't want to make the decision now, you can get temporary access without payment for 14 days. A lot of times people will do this. That'll give you a sense of, for one thing, maybe you don't know if you're going to drop the class or not. Uh, maybe you just don't have the money right now or don't want to use the money right now to get this done. Maybe you can't decide between the 130 and the 95. Um, if you want to choose that, go ahead, and that'll get you in today without having to commit money to it. Um, you'll need to use an access code, credit card, or PayPal before February 11 to stay in the course. There they say stay in the course. It makes it sound like you're going to get kicked out. What will actually happen if you don't pay by then is you'll get locked out, but your work will stay there. So once you do pay, they're holding it hostage. Okay? They're going, um, once you do pay, you'll get back in and your work will still be there. Okay. Um, definitely don't um, just create another whole account. Okay. Uh, if you do get logged out, locked out, um, just um, pay um, when you can and then get back into the same account so you don't have to like replicate work or something. All right. If you have questions about the registration procedure, um, let me know. Like I said, most people will do the temporary access thing. Once you do, when you log in, there's going to be a little thing that's going to nag you every time uh, you log in and say, okay, are you ready to pay? It's a little red uh, printing that says here, clear your temporary access. If you do get locked out completely, then there it'll send you an email also on how to uh, get back in. If you have a question about the registration procedure, uh, then let me know and I can try to walk you through it. What I wanted to show you next was how it looks when you actually uh, log in. So let's see that. All right, once you finish the registration procedure, it probably lets you write in. But in the future, you, when you go to mystatlab.com, it's going to show you this screen. You don't have to go through all the registration again, of course, just go straight to sign in. And then, um, why is it, one second. All right, it's, um, because I created the other phony one, um, it was trying to use that account again. Let's see if that works. There we are. Okay, so uh, you should see Math 14 Spring 2024. Once you log into my Stat Lab, go ahead and click on that. All right, and then you should be in the course. Right now, this is on the instructor view, so let me switch it to what you will actually see. Okay, all right, so um, some differences in what you see versus what I see. Um, anything here with a little eyeball with a slash through it, um, you're not going to see that stuff. Um, course Home takes you to right here, then Assignment, Student Gradebook, um, Stat Crunch, and Data Sets. Those are the first main things that you want to see. Looking in um, uh, the screen to the right, uh, you'll see our calendar, which you'll refer to a lot. Um, uh, it's centered on uh, today, which is the 28th. You'll notice that there are a couple of things, one on February 1st and February 7th. Um, so what are those? Scrolling down, there are current assignments. Um, homework 1-1 one, one through 1-3, one, that's due on February 7th. And then there's an orientation that's due on February 1st. All right. So uh, one thing that you will note is that although it's showing you these uh, assignments on the 1st and the 7th, you don't have to wait until then to do them. That is, the calendar shows you the due date. It doesn't show you when to start the assignment. It shows you when to finish it. So you could do both of these right now. In other words, you have until February 1st to get the first one done. You have until February 7th to get the second one done. When I post assignments, I'll typically give you um, at least several days to get each of these assignments done. As you can see here, you have almost a week for the first one. 
keep an eye on the calendar um, pretty regularly to uh, make sure that you don't miss anything. Uh, here, the June 10th, you can ignore that. Um, that's when I originally created this assignment, uh, which was a while ago. So um, ignore that. Pay attention to the what it says under due right here, due February 7, February 1st. Because of course, it's not June right now, right? Um, so pay attention to the calendar here. You could look currently. You could look at the entire course um, to date, which is just now because it's the beginning. Uh, you can view a week's worth, two weeks, or a month. Um, this is uh, a month backward from where we are at right now. Uh, so set that however you like, but that's um, our calendar. I think it's actually a little easier to use if you look under assignments. So off here to the left, let's take a look where it says assignment. Okay, so I think this is a little easier to see. So this is all the assignments we have so far. Under due, February 1st at midnight, February 7th at midnight, we have the orientation, we have the homework. Once we have a lot of stuff, you're gonna see a lot of stuff in here. You can filter by the assignment types. We have homework, quizzes and tests, uh, right now set for everything. Uh, you can sort by specific chapters once um, we get further along, if you're interested right now, it's showing everything. Okay, so there's that. Uh, StatCrunch, this is software that we'll use later on to actually do statistics. We'll have to save that for another video. Same with data sets. Uh, let me show you how um, an assignment works. I'm going to start with the 1.1, 1.3 homework. I'll leave the orientation for you. When I click on that, you'll see a whole batch of questions right here, which you can click on a question or you can just push start. I'm just going to push start. Awkward delay. There we go. Okay. So here uh, you can see there's question list of questions off to the left side. The question text is in kind of the center pane. Uh, this one happens to be multiple choice. Um, I'm going to guess on one just to see what it does. Um, multiple choice, you only get one try. Um, final check. Okay, that's wrong. I can try again or I can go on to the next question. Let me go on to the next question. When I've gotten the question wrong, you'll notice that there's a red X here, meaning that I missed that one. If I go back and click on it, it's going to show me what the right answer was and what I picked. Okay, let's try question two. You don't have to do the questions in order. You can scroll through them. Let me see what question 11 looks like. That's another multiple choice. Okay, uh, nine. I wanted to find something numerical. A lot of the beginning part of our course has uh, to do with terminology and words for things. So there's not a lot of calculation at the very beginning. All right, let me try this one. Which of the following would be classified as categorical data? Um, let's try hair color. Okay, so I've gotten that right. A little positive feedback. A green check mark instead of a red X this time. And we're going on to the next question. You'll notice here the little circle instead of hollow is now uh, a green check mark in contrast to the red X. I think this is pretty uh, straightforward to use, but if you have any questions about it, let me know. So you can navigate through the questions by scrolling through the uh, list of questions off to the left. Uh, up here in the center, you can see a little less than, which takes you to the previous question, greater than, that takes you to the next question. You can navigate that way as well. Um, once you're done, uh, let's push save to get out of it. Uh, an important thing to note is that you don't have to do the homework all at once. You could do it just like a little bit here and there, and as long as you, of course, get it done by the due date. Um, right now, I have about 2.86% because I haven't done very much. Um, I get five attempts per question. That's pretty great. Um, we could review the questions we've done. I could resume it, or I could just leave. Um, I'm going to leave it for right now. An important thing to note is that you don't have to do something separate to like turn it in. Um, once you've done it, I can get in there and see it. So as long as you've pushed save, as I had done, um, then I can, um, I'll get your score, you'll get your score. You don't have to do anything to turn it in. Okay, um, that's how the assignments look. Let me click on student gradebook. Do I have any grades? A lot of this stuff like Canvas, you're not gonna break anything by clicking on things. So click around, explore, see what things do. Okay, right now my overall grade in the class is like a 2.86 in the class because I haven't done barely anything. Um, the assignment I've worked on, when did I start it? When did I last work on it? Um, that's all I've got so far. Okay, not very much. Um, E-text contents, that's where our book is located. 
Okay, and um, I should have probably read the assignment, read the book before starting the um, assignment. So um, e-text contents, you notice that this little V-shape means that it's something that is opened when it's pointed uh, to the right. That means it's closed, open. Chapter one is open. Uh, just like that, let me close chapter one. Now chapter one's closed, back to open. Like I said, click on things, play around, uh, see how it works. Section 1.1. Okay, you can watch a video. These aren't videos I made, they come from the publisher. Um, you can look in the book and then work in your study plan. The study plan is an optional feature. Um, you don't have to work with it, um, although you can if you want to. Okay, I'm gonna click on view the e-text. Unfortunately, you do need internet access to look at the e-text, so you can't just like download the book and read it like on the bus or something, um, unless you have internet access on the bus. Um, all right, so this is what the book looks like. Um, uh, pretty typical navigation, uh, previous and next pages. You can search for things using the magnifying glass. Uh, table of contents is here. Um, I'm still on section 1.1, of course. If you click on it again, it'll go away. Um, display settings, if you want to change like uh, stuff, one or two pages, um, does it fit the screen or is it uh, in height or width and so on. Again, play with that if you're interested in changing it. All right, so um, read the book. Um, I prefer paper copies of the books myself, but if you're okay with reading on a screen, then that's, um, that is okay, perfectly fine to do. One thing to note is that you can use the, um, keep the book open in one window and uh, the assignment open in another window if you like. Um, so that can help you uh, navigate things. All right, so that is how uh, the textbook looks and that is most all we need for um, um, my math lab or my stat lab. So anything else? I think that's all. I think that you're best off um, getting in and trying it. Um, so what you wanna do once you've created the my uh, stat lab account, uh, get into my stat lab and work on the orientation assignment, which is right there. The orientation assignment is just a couple of questions, really low pressure. There's only six questions and it's oriented on uh, how to navigate the system and how to enter answers. Okay, so I'll give you a couple, uh, your own opportunity to work on that. You get unlimited tries per question, okay? So um, that takes us to the end. Uh, of this video and this introduction to my stat lab. Let me know if you have any questions and have a, a great day.